Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I am going to be doing my January TBR. My new wig is in icy blue and it has like cobalt roots. I've gone blue nails, I got myself a blue makeup palette, and so 2020 is going to be the year of blue. It's my one of my favorite colors and I just love it so much. So I thought, what better way to start the year than reading all sea-themed novels? I love it, I'm gonna have a good time, and I'm gonna start the year out right. I have nine books that are sea-themed that are on my list, and then the last book is going to come from this new jar. These are um, non-fiction or books that have been on my physical shelf from the time that we left Japan. So that means that they have been on my shelf for a year or more, or they're nonfiction, both of which are my weak points. Without further ado, let's get into the nine ocean books and then we will choose this together. I have two fiction books that I wanna to get to in January. The first one here is Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. I have heard almost nothing but good things about this. This is about a girl who is kind of having a bit of a wild time where she's drinking, she's doing drugs, she's kind of a hot mess as it were, um, but when her brother tries to commit suicide and he's sent to a rehab facility in Maine, I believe that she goes there to help him through the process and also try to get her own life back in order, as well as there is this myth about a person in their family coming across a shipwreck um, and that they knew where it was and that her and her friends are going to set out and find the sunken treasure together. So I think that this book sounds amazing. Um, I can't wait to read it. I hope there is some scuba diving elements. I'm not sure if there will be, but I'm always up for that. Um, so that is the first book that I'm hoping to get to. Um, the next fiction I want to talk about is Lion Cross Point by Masatsugu Ono. So this is about 10 year old Takuru who had just had something really bad happen to him and his family, and he is taken in by relatives who live on a very, very small island off the coast of Japan. And over the course of the summer, he is along the coast down by the water trying to make friends, and it says, like, can this very shy, timid, and traumatized boy overcome what happened to him? So I think that this is going to be very dark. It's also very skinny, so I'm unsure how much it's going to get into those darker elements, um, but I'm looking forward to the ocean setting. I love a good coastal town setting. Um, there's just something about it. It really warms my heart. And I'm really looking forward to this. I've had this on my shelf for a while now, so it's about time I got to it. Also, can we just appreciate this cover for a second? It is gorgeous. So before we delve into fantasy, I just want to talk about a poetry collection that I want to get to. It's Your Heart is the Sea by Nikita Gill. I got this um, in 2019 when I was visiting my aunt in South Carolina. Uh, this I've never heard of before either. This is a collection of love poems centered around a sea theme. So I think it's perfect for January and uh, good for getting my toes wet again into poetry uh, because the sea is a great way for me to like kind of merge something I'm interested in with something that I have a hard time reading. So hopefully it will be great. So the first fantasy book I want to talk about is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I have heard about this all over booktube so I just really want to pick it up. The cover is amazing, the story sounds amazing. We're following a main character who is in a library when he stumbles across a book which has his own story written into it, and he learns about the three things he needs. So I believe it is a bee, a key, and a sword. He has to go to a masquerade ball, he has to traverse an ocean, um, and I just, I think that that's a lot of things that I love in one book. I mean, like a masquerade ball, an ocean, a bee, a sword, a library, like count me in. I'm ready, I'm ready for this. The only thing is that it's a little bit chunky, so um, this might be the first book that I read this year, um, or the first book that I start this year. It may not be the first book I finish this year. But if you've read this, let me know what you thought down below. I am so keen to get to it. Ah! <laughs> I checked it out from the library like a week ago, and I have been holding on to it so that I can read it the first week of 2020, because I think it's going to be really good. So the next fantasy book I want to read is Lost Boy by Christina Henry. This is the real true story of Captain Hook. So this is a Peter Pan retelling with kind of a bend on the horror genre. So I have read amazing things about this on Goodreads and I can't wait to get to it. Christina Henry 
does some amazing things with retellings and horror. So I can't wait to read a Peter Pan horror retelling um, where Pan is terrible and he doesn't treat the Lost Boys well at all and Hook's origin story is a lot different from what we've been told. So I cannot wait to get to this one. I'm excited. Gory Peter Pan, like, yes, come, come to me. Another fantasy one is the short story collection Diving Bells by Lucy Wood. Um, all I know is that this is a collection of short stories along Cornwall's ancient coast, um, where we follow different people and different characters as they deal with the ocean in different ways. So I believe there is um, a flotsam story, there's a siren story, there's a selkie story. So I can't wait to get into this and see if this is as good as the cover is because the cover is just gorgeous. And the last fantasy book I want to try to get to is Lorelei by Laura Dockrill. So this is a mermaid story. I have heard mixed things about it. Um, I don't know why I picked it up. I think it was a cover bar just because it's so, so pretty. I, I just could not buy it. So I know that it's kind of, I think, supposed to be not that good, but I'm excited for it anyway. It's also written like with huge, huge letters. So I don't think it will take that long. And honestly, I just, I just love the cover so much. So I will be reading this and hopefully I will like it. If not, then no harm, no foul. So yeah. Okay, and the last section that I wanna talk about is romance. So I have two romances on here. One is The Pirate of Fathoms Deep, which is uh, the number two in the series by Megan Dare. The first one was The High King's Golden Tongue. Um, this one, Pirate of Fathoms Deep, is following a secondary character who is the king of the guard called the Fathoms Deep and um, a pirate that he ran into and had to subdue like in the first book. And so ruthless swashbuckling pirate plus a captain of the very lethal guard. I'm here for it. And also this series, I think it's like six or seven books long. So yay, I'm very excited. Um, and I might be buddy reading this with Nomad. So Nomad, if you're watching, um, I hope that we can buddy read this together in January. I know that we have both been really busy, but January, here we come. Okay. The last one is kind of one that I just couldn't not, once I saw it on Goodreads, I was like, yes, of course. So this is Omega from the Ocean. So this is um, an Omegaverse. We are following in this world a virgin prince sacrifice who is going to be given to like the, the sea lord, I think, only he isn't that virginal and also there's also dragons so this is a mermaids and dragons alpha omega universe and i'm here for it now we are to the point where i'm going to do the uh this jar i need a name for it so if anyone has any idea let me know but um for now yeah i'm just gonna say the chalice so we're gonna pick one out together i'm really scared i hope it's not one of the really long ones because i don't want to start my year out like that Okay, I got it. Okay, it's not bad. So it says, let's see if it will focus here. Uh-oh. It's kind of a funny story. So it's kind of a funny story. So it's kind of a funny story is Ned Vizzini's story about growing up as a teen in New York City and uh, surviving a suicide attempt and then what happens after that. Um, unfortunately, the author did take his own life later on, uh, but this book, I think, deals with a very serious topic, um, and that's probably why I've been putting it off, but no longer. This is going on the January TBR pile. So, it's kind of a funny story is added into all of the ocean stuff. Um, I'm going to mention the Tea Dragon Festival, which um, I had on hold at the library and then it, it became available, so um, I am going to be reading it in January just because I don't want to have to like give it up without reading it, of course. So this one is going on the pile. I love everything Kitty O'Neill ever does. I am a huge fan of the Tea Dragon Society. I also have the card game. And also, we looked at the Apricorn Cove board game the other day in the game store, which if you didn't know, it's amazing. It's about creating a community and saving the coral reef. So buy it if you have young ones in your life. Um, yeah, so I am really, really excited to read this. This is also on the January pile. Woo! 
as well as there's one more. Um, I may be reading The Butterfly Garden with Jordaline from Jordaline Reads. I will leave her links down below. She's amazing. She likes dark stuff. She likes creepy stuff. She likes horror. She's just all around an amazing person and friend and I'm so glad that we've started buddy reading together. So yeah, those are my 12 books that I am planning to read for January. Most of them with an ocean theme, some dragons thrown in, some dark stuff thrown in. I mean like I'm still me of course. So yeah, um, let me know what you think of my January TBR and I like talking to you guys so much and I hope that you're having an amazing January and that you're going to get lots of stuff read and that some of these books sound appealing to you. If they do, then make sure to subscribe or hit the like button. That would mean a lot. I like to read dark stuff, queer stuff, translated stuff, um, and I guess in January, lots of ocean themed stuff. So if that's up your alley at all, I will see you guys around in another video soon. Bye!